Okay, let's look at prismatic joints. Prismatic joints are probably the trickiest things to get right, so I've left them till last. And they're tricky because they have an axis and they have limits and they have motors as well. Um, but let's take a look at setting up a prismatic joint between these two bodies, A and B. And as before, we put the cursor somewhere so for now let's put the cursor right in the middle and in body mode we select body A and body B in that order and use the spacebar to bring up the action menu and we choose add prismatic joint like that and then we'll go to joint mode and we can see we have a joint here now um, and this is a prismatic joint and we can tell the difference between a prismatic joint and a wheel joint because they kind of look similar because they have the same axis dashed line marker going vertically up there. Uh, a prismatic joint also has this little arrow marker to show the positive direction for this axis. So as for the wheel joint, the default value for the axis is 0, 1, so it's vertical. And that is actually a, a local axis, remember, so that's local to body A. Um, right, what else do we have? Let's just take a look at the markers, because the other thing that's different to wheel joints is that for prismatic joints, both of these marker icons are square and that's to signify that neither of them should be rotating relative to each other at least um, they should be sort of stuck in the same axis like that um, so let's just see what that does for us right now um, I'll zoom out here now when I start this running I'll just catch body B here because it's just going to fall off into nowhere. But you can see when I try and drag this around that body A and body B are stuck together on this axis, or rather the the uh, the uh, anchor points are stuck together on the axis. Is really what's going on, isn't it? And that's the simplest prismatic joint you can make. So let's uh, do something a little bit more interesting let's add some limits and we can add limits by let's do it manually first and we can first we need to enable limits like that and when we enable limits we can see that the axis marker changes a little bit because it doesn't go off up forever anymore it's limited so the axis doesn't get drawn like that. And in the same way as we had for revolute joints, we have um, markers showing here to show us the upper limit and the lower limit. And if we just run that, see how it works now. Okay, run. Now both of the limit points are zero, so this is uh, there's nowhere that this body B can move to at the moment. So let's change the limits here we have uh, let's make the lower limit minus 2 and you can see that the marker has moved here and we'll make the upper limit 2 and you can just see here that the lower limit and the upper limit are slightly different sizes the, uh, uh, the upper limit is a little bit longer so you can vi visually tell them apart like that And oh, I guess you could also tell that from the fact that the arrow points in the positive direction. So this is the upper limit there. All right, so let's run that and see what happens. Now we can see that the anchor point is only allowed to get to as far as the limit there. And going upwards, same thing. Okay. And... 
we can also change the orientation of the axis as we did for the wheel joint and we do it in the same way and that is by hitting the R key three times so now we are in a third mode if we keep hitting R of course we oh, if we have the cursor somewhere like that we are rotating the joint axes like the, uh, the joint anchor positions and then the third time we hit R we are rotating the axis. So it's the same as for the wheel joint and we can cycle between these by continuously hitting R like that. Okay so let's uh, let's make the axis like uh, 45 degrees here and just as a quick demo run that. So now we have the prismatic joint sliding in a 45 degree angle relative to body A. Uh, and we can do some things like rotating body A like this and what does that give us? Something more like that. So you can see that this um, axis is rotating when body A rotates. Actually if we made this dynamic it would be more obvious, wouldn't it? Dynamic. So now, oops, now we can see a little bit clearer that the axis is fixed in the frame of reference of body A and body B come to think of it <laughs> but the setting is is relative to body A okay and finally I'll just put that back to static okay and finally we can add some settings for joint motors so first we need to enable the motor uh, give it some force and we'll make it move at one unit per second this will be in the positive direction so it will be moving towards the right here so let's check that okay if I let go the joint motor pushes body B one unit per second in the positive direction of this joint axis So hopefully making settings like this is a lot easier than trying to code things manually as most people have probably do, been doing so far. Um, especially for prismatic joints I found these really uh, really messed with my head when I was trying to set them up manually using programming. <laughs> so hopefully this is a, a better solution. Okay, and that's going to do it for this video, and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Uh, okay, I forgot something again, of course. Quite forgetful, aren't I? Uh, what I forgot was that we can also set the limit points visually. Um, so we can set them by looking at where body B will end up, in the same way that we did for revolute joints. So I'll just undo a few things there and let's just check what do we have here. Okay, so this is what we were at before and we set these limits manually by typing in minus 2 and 2 to get this arrangement. But let's say we wanted to do something a little bit more specific and we don't want to bother with typing in the limits manually what we want to do is let's say we want to have this bottom left corner of body B sliding from the bottom right corner of body A starting here so this will be the lower lower limit position and it will slide all the way up to here and that will be the upper limit position there so as you can imagine programming this in your in your source code would be quite a headache I think I don't know maybe you're cleverer than I am but one way we can do it fairly easily here is um, let's do it like this we will first we'll put the anchor position we need to put the local anchor for this somewhere here well not really let's put it there and if you want to make that more exact 
you can actually do this as well. Let's select this vertex and we can look at the world position of that vertex and copy it and then go back to joint mode and then select the joint and we'll select, set the world position of anchor A by pasting in the location of that vertex. So now we have it exactly on that vertex. And let's do that one more time. World position here and joint. This time we want to set the world position of anchor B. Okay, so now we have the anchors of those set up like that and let's quickly run that and see what it looks like. Alright, so now we have the point uh, sliding up nicely like that. The corner points rather, are together. And now we want to set the limits graphically. And we can do that in the same way that we did for revolute joints. And that is by hitting the L key. So if I hit the L key once, it shows me where body B will be when it's at the lower limit. And if I hit L key again, I can switch between editing the position for the lower limit and the upper limit. And if I move the mouse around when I'm in this mode, uh, it just slides slides body B along that axis like this. So I can move my mouse around but it constricts body B to being on that axis. So this lets me uh, position things exactly as I was saying before. I want to put body B right about there when it's at the lower position, lower anchor. And I accidentally just set the upper anchor as we can see here. So let me do that again. Uh, L. So if you hit L once, you get lower anchor. So I wanted the lower anchor to be there. And you can see uh, I accidentally, well, this is a good example, I suppose. Uh, if you put the upper limit and the lower limit in conflict with each other, so I think here we have the upper limit is actually lower than the lower limit, so that doesn't make sense. The joint is not going to work like that. So this uh, joint marker shows in red in that case. So the lower limit is in the right place now. So I hit L two times. And remember that if you check the context help here, you can see what you're doing. Um, now I'm setting the upper limit position. So you can do that like this. And that will give us exactly what we wanted. So now we have body B. When we run this, we will see. Go. So body B will be sliding with its corner perfectly on the edge of body A. And the limits are exactly what we wanted as well. So this is a, a great way to visually set up the limits without too much stress encoding. Okay, now we're finished. Thanks.